Can't look in the eyes of my brother Without shedding a tear for my brother I really want to try for my brother Cause I truly do feel for my brother Yo! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back! <laughs> Welcome back! Welcome back! Welcome back to another episode of the Informally Honest Podcast. Four brothers, all got mothers, having candid conversation that we root ourselves in being forthright, vulnerable, and honest. Man, oh man, oh man, it feels good to be back. Didn't what well, didn't Eminem say that at the top of Mosh? Uh, people, yeah, oh, it feels so good to be back. Yeah, <laughs> wait a minute, that was Square Dance. He might have said that in several songs, though. Okay, I, I know he said okay. that in Square Dance, but who, it doesn't, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it just came to mind, but yo, <laughs> oh man, we, we're back, we're back, we're back. Like, we're glad we're to have y'all join us. Um, the I, I, of course, we're gonna thank. Uh, people who've been listening, the numbers <coughs> keep going up, and we're just excited. We just, uh, we're ecstatic. We're trying to monetize, but we'll get into that another time. <laughs> um, this is another response episode. Welcome. People been writing. People we been heard listening you. to yes. Yes. So, listening to me spell this goddamn email address. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and wrote us. And so this one's what, what the old folks would call a twofer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that one. Yo, 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 that shit was better than just one laugh. I had to give you a little bit more. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so we we responded to two people. We got Chris and we got Katie. So we want to uh, thank y'all for writing in. We're going to start with Chris and then we're going to go to Katie just because Chris has an older email. So we want to go in chronological order, if you will. Now, Chris wrote us a few things. We did touch on some of them before. But the main one that I want to pick out for us to talk about today, because we're going we gonna to get straight in there. I know we normally do a check in and I'm sure y'all are fine. And by fine, <laughs> fine I mean dealing with uh, continuing to deal with the bullshit that we deal with today. Right. And so, uh, say this for the record, <laughs> protests have not stopped, police are still on bullshit, fireworks are government issued, and <laughs> <laughs> they're shooting them off right yeah. now as we speak. Huh? Yeah. They said they're they shooting them off right now as we speak. <laughs> Weeks on a, before, on till four in the morning. Four in the morning. <laughs> won't yo. even let the sun go down, man. Yo. Yep. That, like, it, man. That, that's what just makes it so <laughs> clear that, that, that they don't fucking care, because fireworks are about seeing them, and they're like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. It's about fucking up your piece. Yeah, man. Yeah, we came here to <laughs> fuck shit up. Really. <laughs> and so um want, want to put that on record that we are not we are not avoiding that subject by all means. Uh I can't speak for anyone else, but I still say uh uh personally defund the fucking police and fuck all of that. And by all means, if you want more insight on that, this is not the place for it. So you can go uh you can always go to someone's actual political podcast or website. There's too much information out there to come listen to us talk about it. Uh-huh. And by all means, we can talk about it, but eh, there's more fun things to talk about. So, <laughs> Adam, I love that you tried to get out of frame and realize you couldn't. <laughs> 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 <Do> I? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, if, you're, if, if you're listening, that, then that just encourages you to watch. Uh, by all means, we're on YouTube. Uh, we're, we're recording this via Zoom. So, uh huh, you can't see. <laughs> that, that, Tony, that Tony Ayo? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so many camera flashes, I gotta do that yeah, yo dance. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chris, Chris wrote in and asked us this excellent question that, oop, accidentally tapped it and I lost it. Give me a second. It's all good. Now that we're doing it, I, I can finally say, Chris, you can uh, get out of my DMs about why we haven't responded to your <laughs> question. Um, because here we go. <laughs> here we go. It starts now. And I'll, I'll even say that Chris had one of the questions about like uh, our thoughts on defunding the police. And my thought is, do it. That's my whole <laughs> thought. Do it. Yeah. 
and any uh because on the previous episode i did say uh i i misquoted a number <laughs> but the actual number is still fucking horrible that uh if chicago has four million dollars a day to spend on police i'm sure you can spend it towards other shit so yes defund them even if they just went down to three million a day that's still a significant amount of savings yeah <laughs> like, like, and they're really not but, preventing nothing still yeah they're yeah. not preventing still anything saying, <laughs> yeah it's like yo you've had chance you've had enough chances to put to like to change your ways <laughs> you know with that much money <laughs> it hasn't happened so i'm sorry we're taking it away from you now you lost oh, your allowance Chicago you lost, property. You lost, <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't have been that as yeah. much violence, like right. Yeah. So defund them, and then give them some type of proper training, emotional, mental background, whatever. Something. All that stuff we said. Yeah, like, yeah all, all that, that good shit we said. said yeah, we ain't getting back into that. Go listen to that episode. Okay, so the one we the one we gonna go with is if you could pick five people to eat dinner with. Living or dead, who would they be and why? Now, he asked about five people. That's a lot of fucking people. <coughs> I don't think any of us have the capacity to think of five people, nor do we have the time on this podcast. <laughs> so we're going to go with two or three. It's just, it's just, you know, shave that down a little bit. So two or three people. Who wants, who wants to jump in there first? <clears throat> don't all go at once. I got one. Go, Marco. <laughs> 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 You know how in school we learn about Thomas Edison and the Nikola Tesla, that whole battle mm-hmm. or whatever, but they really don't right. talk about Nik- Nikola Tesla. Mm-hmm. I would like to sit down and talk to him about some of his ideas, mm. where where his world was, you know, leading everybody before his demise or his uh his story. I think his story is pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. So I think. Now I don't know how his how his how, how his culinary skills are, but <laughs> 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 yeah. or what what he used to eat or whatever. But I think it would be a nice sit down with that fella. Okay, okay, that's one. Who else you got? And I love that you said his culinary skills as if he was going to be responsible for the meal. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would probably show him some future type. Yeah, he'd be blown away, yo. Yo, well, yo DiGiorno? What the fuck is DiGiorno? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say it's waffles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what's futuristic as far as food these days. True. Something that wasn't around. Toaster strudels or something. I, I, just, I, just, I just see Nikola, Nikola Tesla seeing a waffle and being flabbergasted by this creation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but who else we got? We got Nikola Tesla. Who else? I, real quick, I do have a quick question. Right. So, like, are you are are we saying that if they if the person has died, are you saying that can we talk to them after they died and they know they're dead, or we're talking mm. to them in their prime of their life? Oh, they, that's, oh, that's, that's a good one. That's, that's a great stipulation. Mm. I would. Or argue, does it matter? <clears throat> no, no. For me, I would argue you're speaking to them in the now. Okay. And so, yes, you're probably going to uh, probably a good hour and a half or two hours are going to be spent telling them all the shit that they missed while they were dead. Oh, and then after you get past that part of the conversation or, or <laughs> do we put a time? Like, is there a time limit on the this is just going to be adding all the stipulations now. Is there a time <laughs> limit on, on this? Yeah, I got one when you're done. I have one when you're done. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like um, it's a thing of you're sitting down for a, you know, like three, four hour uh conversation in, in there you're gonna have a meal you may have an amuse bouche or appetizer if you will um <laughs> and, and, and uh in in the in that three four hours you could talk about anything but they're not going to they you can they can you can answer questions about you know what what the quote unquote future to them is but it's purely you facilitating the conversation I think I'll, okay. I'll do a bad job in explaining what's been going on since they left. <laughs> Me too. That's <laughs> a, yo. Where do you start? Like, I think the first question they're gonna ask is, "Who the fuck are you? Yo, why, <laughs> yo, why? Why am I here? Son? Why? Why did you fucking dig me up? I'm a time. Ask <laughs> these questions. Son. Okay, so. 
So where were we? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody well, else give one. Okay. Oh, I, uh, I, okay. I didn't know if we were just going to like yeah. all give our two or three. Okay. Uh, uh, for me, um, I, we, can, we, can, we can mix it up. That's fine. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. mix it up. Okay, yeah. so I'm not going to be able to think of three in a row. That's real. <laughs> the, first, the first one for me is going to be a little selfish. So if you don't know nothing about dance, then man, you'll be all right. Uh, my favorite choreographer, his name is uh, Ulysses Dove. And he, okay. he's, he's this prolific choreographer whom uh, I, I don't think I've seen a work of his yet that I haven't thoroughly enjoyed. And that and between seeing pieces that he's done on Dayton Contemporary Dance Company, Alvin Ailey or the Royal Swedish Ballet, I think it was. Um, he's, he, he just has all this work uh, that has been like prolific. And as a choreographer, I, I just want to pick his brain about his process. Um, I want to pick his brain about how he views work. I want to be able to show him some current work to see how he, to see how he feels about it, uh, how dance has evolved since his generation. I, I want to pick his brain in that way artistically uh, from, the, from the view, uh, from the perspective of a dancer and a choreographer. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's a, that's, I feel like that's a fair... That's a fair person to ask some questions too. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm about to bring a word back. I'm thinna. I'm thinna. <laughs> bring it back. <laughs> still say yeah. people still say thinna. Do we? Do we? I, uh, I don't. Really. But I'm saying I, people. A lot of okay. people still say thinna. I, 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 I stopped. I stopped for a while because I was getting like a week of punishment. Like thinna is not a word. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, Chris, you remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, let's see. I'm gonna pick our man. I'm stuck between these two, Van Gogh and Picasso, for two very good, two very different reasons, but they're both really good. Um, you can say both. No, nah, I want to do one, and then I got somebody else on deck. Okay. Somebody else up to bat. Um, okay. uh, my, uh, my pinch hitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with Picasso, though. Everybody, pretty much, for the most part knows who Picasso is. Uh, but I feel like he was one of the, I think he was one, a rare case in regards to artists who know what it feels like to be poor and fairly wealthy in, in, uh, in their lifetime. Um, because yeah, he used to be poor, which was like, I, I learned that maybe a couple of years ago. And then I wanna say he ran into a businessman who allowed him to, who gave him like a space to create and also sleep and then he went around and he had some pull. So he was like, like hyping his name up to everybody. Um, and he just so happened to be really good also, but like he, he hyped his name up and I like almost like you would, you know, selling a product like, yo, we got this new cat. He's very different. And he obviously was. Um, so then when he was able to actually create art and get his stuff out there, he was able to raise the price a lot sooner than he normally would. Hmm. Um, so he knows what it's like to be poor and rich, I believe, or like fairly wealthy before he passed away. And just, I also would like to know what gave him this, the, the bravery to, to cut his own ear off. No, that was no, Van no, 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 that was Van Gogh. Yeah, that was Van Gogh. That was like, Van Gogh. I'm mixing up. Yeah. What gave him the bravery to switch over from the, the traditional, more traditional means of art to pretty much creating his own lane. Um, mm. Like, because a lot of, I feel like a lot of, like, there's a lot of possibility of just like failing um, and doing that. Just because I, I kind of feel like a lot, like there's a lot of sweat, like a lot of the society had, uh, what, what, what I'm trying to say, had, Society could could sway whether you were famous or not, or or, or or whether you were successful or not, based on like what mm -hmm. what is supposedly the proper means of art or like you know real art. Uh, I think uh, I think art critics had more pull back then. Uh, so just like having the bravery to step out and do that, and then still become wealthy, and then and then create your own, really create your own lane with, with cubism. Um, I think him and several other gentlemen were the first ones to really make that popular, create it and make it popular. Um, so I think he did a lot of 
paving the way for like my, a lot of modern art um, <clears throat> back then. So I think it'd be really cool to chop it up with him. Um, and, and I just like, I kind of like his fashion back then too. I think, I think he wore some dope, <laughs> some dope shirts. I think his choices <laughs> were really good. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he, I, for some reason, I just picture him with a fucking cigar and a cool ass hat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's one pick. I'm realizing I didn't go in depth about why. <laughs> I knew you guys. Do you want to? Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind time. of do, actually. Um, so if a lot of people don't know Nikola Tesla, but um, I think I think the reason why I really want to would would like to have a talk with him is because his ideas on energy. For one, um, he he did a project. He had this project in which he was trying to. Well, he actually did as like the debatable thing that um, he was able to broadcast uh, electric wirelessly. Uh, I keep I forget the project name, but it's pretty well documented. Uh, his pictures. Um, and also his views on consciousness uh, from a philosophical or whatever type of standpoint uh, was kind of, it was not popular. And uh, some of the stuff he was talking about was, was connected to science, but also more spiritually based. And I feel like the world kind of went with what was a, a money maker when when him and Thomas Edison were having their um, I wouldn't even call them differences, just races to to uh, engineer something new or you know bring bring the world um, evolve the world more in a sense. And uh, I feel like they went with Thomas Edison's inventions and in, in his. I would even I would even call it a uh, a way of life. Um, so that's that's just to expound a little more on on why I think he is a important person. And there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy surrounding um, his later years. Mm. So I would I would want to know more about that. Mm. Word. That's a good explanation. <laughs> yeah. AJ, it's on you. Perhaps it is. All right. So <laughs> for, for me, um, I feel like everyone, everyone's first pick at least is definitely somebody that I could see. I could see you guys picking them even without explaining. Like, okay, I see why you picked that person. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to kind of at least follow suit in that way. So for me, um, <clears throat> I'm going to go with Gordon Parks. Mm, uh, yeah. So like for uh, like th the funny thing about me picking Gordon Parks is well, it's not funny, but the interesting thing. Interestingly enough, my my wife is probably even, probably more into Gordon Parks than I am even. Mm. But I definitely he's definitely important, you know, especially to if you're if you're a photographer, you know, he's somebody you should know. Uh, but not, not only that, I mean, he was. Uh, he was a photographer he was a writer he was a filmmaker he was a musician so he he you know he was and he was good at all of those things he wasn't like he was like great at one then just kind of okay at the other so he was um for example like uh, uh as far as the the filmmaking goes he he was i, I believe he was the first african-american to make like a to i'm pretty sure he was like to produce a major film whatever and he i'm pretty sure that i think that film was shaft actually hmm. uh and and it, maybe i'm mixing up those details but i know i know he was definitely a pioneer in like that world as far as that genre of like uh black exploitation i can never say the word black exploitation <laughs> yeah he kind of started that that genre uh hmm. um so that's 
that's that as far as filmmaking, filmmaking, but as far as him as a photographer, which is really why I would really want to, because what would really want to speak to him about is he seemed to have like immediately jumped on the scene and was good. Like just immediately. <laughs> like I think the st- there's a story of like, you know, he was interested in photography. So he went and bought a camera and um, he like, Oh, I don't want to mess the story up, but he bought a camera. He went and took some pictures, whatever. And he went and got them uh, developed because back then you can't put, upload them on your computer or whatever. So <laughs> he went and got the photos developed. And then the guy that worked at the camera store, you know, was like, you know, these are amazing. He was under the impression that this guy has been doing this for years. Mm-hmm. That was literally his first role of film was, you know, so it kind of he kind of jumped into it and was like, just naturally gifted at this and like he was like the first pretty sure he was the first uh black photographer ever like to be have his work featured in vogue and like it's just i mean it's just accolade after accolade really Hmm. and like and he not only that he kind of does like not kind of but he did all genres of photography like fashion Hmm. uh photo photo journalism which was is my favorite stuff is his stuff of his Hmm. photo journalistic work uh he has like this series of where like he was he was i think he was in harlem i think and he was like uh in the 70s i think it was 60s or 70s he was in harlem and he was essentially documenting like the gang life in harlem and that's like that's bold enough really just to be like in the streets with your camera taking and like the last thing you want as a <laughs> as a criminal is proof of anything <laughs> i mean yeah and this guy was just like in it you know and just capturing mm-hmm. these crazy crazy photos of course i'm going to post them on the video so <laughs> uh i'm gonna post a few of them uh so yeah i mean okay and then to wrap it up the fact that he was just like into like all of these different genres of art you know music film photography is kind of reminds me of, of myself a little bit mm-hmm. like i'm i'm not an expert at anything but uh, but um i do enjoy to do just a lot of different stuff and i'm like i'm not like so i'm not a professional at anything but it's just for me like and I, I tell I tell I tell my wife this all the time. Like for me, like if there's a period of time where I can't creatively do something, I actually get anxious. Like I actually get mm. like mentally like just not upset, but it, it, I, I can feel it. So that's why, like for me, uh, but that's why for Sorry. me, like I know you're good. But that's why for me, like every time I'm I'm somewhere, like whether I'm like whether I was like overseas in Korea or 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 even when i was in afghanistan i, I brought a, a travel size uh a, 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 a ukulele i had a, a guitar as well because i had to do something even if i'm not good at the thing i just need to do something otherwise i'll go crazy <laughs> so that's why i would talk to gordon parks and just figure out like what drove him to just literally essentially just experiment in all of these different things but end up being great at all of them like how do you get to that level of being a professional mm-hmm. you know so that's it that was a solid one <laughs> yeah that was really good i'm about to step my game up <laughs> <laughs> so um uh my next one i think it will be like my like my extra uh intellectual conversation um and that is professor kaba hiawatha kamene mm. Uh, and he he's a best-selling author. He's he's this guy that um, I I got introduced to him through the Hidden Color series, which I know is like the Fotep handbook. <laughs> but <laughs> I um, I'm not I'm also not going to act like it's not full of valuable information. Although I think Tariq Nasheed is not the person to go looking for like great information from. Um, but I, I I used to uh, I used to watch a lot of his uh, his lectures, and I just think that he's like such an interestingly fascinating mind, especially in regards to uh, uh, African history, Pan African history, et cetera. And so, just, um, I don't even know if that would be as much of a conversation as a like crash course in his, in the wealth of information that he has, and kind of wanted to be a sponge to it. And not even necessarily like wanting to be, you know, 
I'm sure you can buy a ticket to a lecture or sign up for a class, et cetera, but more so like to be in a personable conversation with him about since you've acquired this information, what have you, what have you done with it and how has it served you beyond continuing just to teach it? Like what, what, how can this information be used to serve the buildup of future generations? How has it served to build you up as a black man? Um, what are your feeling? What are your continued feelings on Pan-Africanism and have they shifted since you started learning, this, uh, since you started studying this information? Just all of those kind of stuff, just more so bringing it back to a more personable thing as opposed to uh, shit I could just read. And so, yeah, that, that would be like my second choice. That's a good one, too, man. Man, that is that is like a question I would like want to ask a lot of people who teach certain things. Like, how has it affected you? The things you teach personally affected you, you know, mm -hmm. that's a that's a really good one. Damn. Well, shit, it's just. <laughs> 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 um, my, 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 my. Like sketchy, after, sketchy, sorry. Sketchy. I feel like I feel like after the first one, I have I have a lot now. Like I can they, I can do the five, but okay. <laughs> but we'll see. We just talking for an hour and yeah. ten minutes. Yeah, and <laughs> see what happens. Right. But we still got to answer the question. Um. Let's see. I I I was this is the first dude that came to mind. Uh, his name is Sai Guru. Well, that's like not his real name. That's just a name that he goes by on the. Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> 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 no, nah, it, uh, he's an Indian. It, it, it means an uneducated guru. And just, it's the guru is just the, uh, is the most common typical idea of like guru and disciple, like in the, mm -hmm. the, the way it is in the East, whatever somebody's thinking about the typical idea that is to my knowledge, what it would be, except it means uneducated. So he got to where he was and uh, <clears throat> he, had his transformation without reading any religious books or any being taught any condition or being taught any philosophies or anything in any way, which I personally like a lot uh, because I, I find that it's, it's probably rare. Um, but don't fact check me because I don't fucking know if that's true. <laughs> um, it's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but his real name is uh, Jaggy Bazudave, I believe. Uh, trying to pronounce that. Say that uh, name again. Jaggy Vazudave. Vazudave, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm not, try, I try my best in my American <laughs> conditioning to pronounce that properly. Um, but that, this dude, and I'm sure actually this is Chris's question. I know Chris has heard me speak about him or reference him, or if you've ever checked out my Twitter or Instagram. <laughs> Then uh, you see me post something because this dude is profound, man. And uh, every time he is, every time he says something, it's it's typically very simple and practical. It's almost scientific in the way he says it, but it hits me. I feel like it cuts through a lot of my BS and over. It cuts through my ability to to overanalyze and like all that unnecessary shit, and just hits me hits me with some real depth. Um, I've also, he's, he is also the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> damn, I'm trying to have a moment. No, I'm, I'm, sorry, <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you, man. Um, dude also has a sense of humor, which is great, but he is also the founder of the Isha, the, uh, Isha Yoga Center and the Isha Institute, which is where I, I stayed for a bit and, uh, got initiated into several forms of, um, ancient yoga, uh, some real deal shit. I was mad, <laughs> mad painful. <laughs> it was not watered down. It hurt. Um, but I, I mean, uh, even there, I got real life experience of like people who've been changed just from very practical methods of what do you currently have right now? Just for instance, uh, you have your mind, your body, your energy, your emotions. You have these things that you experience on a daily basis, moment, moment basis. What can you do if you find a certain, if you can get those things to a certain balance, the things, not the intangible philosophy stuff, the shit you know you experience right now, if you can get that to a certain balance, what can you, like, what can happen in your life? So uh, from my experience and, and uh, many others, um, 
I would love to sit down and talk with this guy about, I mean, not, not even necessarily uh, uh, particularly spiritual things, but just just anything, just, uh, yeah, anything. I'd love to hear his insight on anything, man. Uh, <laughs> and uh, one, yeah, one last thing about this cat is there are, there are plenty of people who, who would, would be considered, there are, I'm sure, plenty of people who would be considered enlightened or tra tra transformed or mystics or whatever. But uh, this guy is in a select group of, of individuals who will like ruffle my feathers, will like ruffle me, to, ruffle me at my core, but I still, yeah, I know, I know, I know how that sounds. Y'all bleep me out, y'all bleep it out. <laughs> uh, so you kept saying, like, just ruffle yeah. me, just yeah. ruffle, ruffle my feathers. <laughs> like, yo, I just, I, I just know he'll, he'll ruffle me right. <laughs> it's off, yo, yo, this is off the top, man. This is off the top, all right? No beat, no beat, no beat, man. I need a beat. <laughs> I'm on some freeway shit right now. I need to be. Don't <laughs> yeah. Would you like to eat some ruffles too? <laughs> um, that's funny. Yeah, this nah, dude, that's good. No, nah, this dude will. This dude will. I'm gonna say it one more time. This dude. <laughs> this dude will like. Now I'm trying to think of a different word. Yo. I can't. Find it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, don't let us shame. Don't let us shame like, Any beliefs or whatever I would have, he would. He, he would give You're them a proper them. challenge. He'll give it a proper challenge. Yet I still want to. I still come back for more, and that's rare. I'll still come back for more. So there's, there's something significant there. Uh, Yo, I would argue that with a proper ruffling, so. you'll always go back for more. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh shit, y'all! I'm, like I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry. I got fuck this up for you. I know. Uh, I know you was counting. <laughs> y'all making me forget my my truth. <laughs> Yeah, yo, he's a solid dude. Uh, check out Isha Yoga Center. Uh, it's, yo, it's it's some great stuff, man. It's some it's some really really good shit. The dude has done a lot in general too, but like the environment and uh, people in prisons, uh, the, the the from the poorest to the richest people in uh, India and the United States. So mm. he's actually he's 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 living what he's saying, man. And that's uh that shit hits me in a in, in a rather Deep place. Hey, that was a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, provided some proper entertainment during my. <laughs> <laughs> I always, always like the spiritual side of things. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I, I would say my second one would be, and I just thought of this real quick, but it's still a good one. Um, <laughs> but uh, is a producer that. Is the question, is it dead or alive? Yeah. 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 It, it, okay, well, it's another uh, deceased one. But uh, uh, his name is Jay Dilla. He is. Yes. Uh, like uh, Brother Gansey. The ancestor of the God. Very, <clears throat> a very prolific <laughs> producer uh, from Detroit uh, during, I want to say, late 90s, early 2000s era. Yeah. Yeah. He really, um, for one, he really had his own sound mm -hmm. and his, I could go on like about this, like his sample selection, how he flipped, how he made beats like his, I would just like to see him in his progress in his, in his process. I mean, of, of making music, his collaborations, uh, just the sound, his whole sound, I would like to see or and pick his brain. Uh, just, I would just like to even be in a room when, when he, <laughs> when he making beats. So, mm. uh, I think he, he, he has maintained, well, he did maintain a certain level of mystique about himself. Mm. Uh, I don't think he really worked with, and I may be wrong, but I, I think he he worked with like a select amount of people, um, or select quality uh, type um, artists. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked with the, like Common and um, that whole like Soul era that we were talking about. Yeah, Soul Aquarians was the name of the group, right? 
And I think he had a lot to do with that whole sound in general. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever you hear his music, well, whenever I hear his music, I can tell is his his productions. Mm -hmm. so he had a unique sound <clears throat> that was very it was very unique to his time, but at the same time, it was it was just his distinct style, I would say. Mm -hmm. And um, he's just like a top-notch producer that I would like to just kind of, just kind of uh, bounce some ideas or questions off of. And mostly, mostly these people I bring up, I just want to observe them in their in their process, right? Yeah, and that's real. I, don't, I wouldn't really want to. Like, I don't have nothing to gain, but but those observations and those, you know. Um, I would, I wouldn't really, I guess it would be nice to, <laughs> to, for me to tell them what has transpired or whatever, if that's, if that's the scenario, but I would just more so just love to see them in their, in their niche. Mm. Yeah. Uh, space I mean, of, yeah, I can, I can get that, that, uh, for some of these, it's not even that a conversation would be right. the idea, would be the ideal scenario of of like really getting the most out of that interaction. Uh, Cause I feel you on that. I, um, excuse me, but I do think it would be great. And I can, I can talk about this on my next pick uh, after Adam goes or after a number of people go um, that there, there's artists that if they got to see what happened to their leg or uh, happened with their legacy. Oh yeah. I, yeah. And like, there's some folks that you like, I just really, I, I would love for them to know. Yeah. Because I would say like, <clears throat> I don't think Jay Dilla was even that popular. Um, when, when he was doing what he was doing. Um, I would say a little towards the end of his career is when people started, you know, a bunch of rhymes really, and people really recognizing yeah. his, his artistry. To my knowledge, it was really after donuts. Like right. donuts, what donuts was what set it apart, but donuts was his last album, wasn't it? Um, or was there one more he, after that? He had a lot after he died, so I kind of get him confused. That's, that's real. So, um, but yeah, like it, it was, it was a thing of donuts set him up to had to skyrocket, but he didn't live that much longer after. Yeah, he, if I'm not mistaken, he had Crohn's disease, and that's yeah. what led to his demise, but. During that time, was it Crohn's or lupus? I I think it was Crohn's. Okay, but during that time, he was he was still like a hundred percent about his art, and that's what I another thing I really admire about him. Like he was really true to his craft, like to the day he died. So true. I feel like he he was a uh, a pillar in hip hop in music. Absolutely, however, however you want to. <laughs> You know, I think he still is. I think people still yeah, consider him. Most be. definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, the thing I want to add to it is, like, like you know how, like, the genre of, like, chill hop is kind of, like, taken over? Oh, lo-fi, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so like, you know that how that how the drums are, like, slightly offbeat oh, a little yeah. bit? Mm -hmm. Ever so slightly? He started that. Yeah. yeah. So, that's, like, that was, like, his kind of his trademark. So, like, he... Even though he's not alive, his like that carried on, you know. And it's like, and that and what's okay. so weird about that is, um, I mean, there there's even rock bands that do that, like the the mm. Black Keys. Some mm. some of their songs, the drums are like slightly, you know, off a little bit, and mm -hmm. they and they they're known to 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 be hip hop fans. So I'm sure they're well aware of that, you know, like. Mm. Yeah, you know, like they're they're artists. Artists. yeah. So there's yeah, a lot of things he did, like technically, like Adam just mentioned the very technical part of of his pro, uh, procedure, like, and that's that's really a big thing. Like I saw, I was looking up producer stuff, and they were saying how when you granul, I think it's called granulize, but mm -hmm. it basically, uh, it, I know what you're talking about. It's, uh, when it aligns like perfectly, your your beats quantize. Uh, Quantize, quantize. Yeah. and it, okay. it sounds quantize. cold when you quantize. do it. It sounds, is that's right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't, I don't know, but yes, let's go with that. 
it basically <laughs> make, it makes your, your music sound cold or robotic robotic uh mm-hmm. so and he had he had this one sound that was like an alarm kind of thing that I, I every time i hear it is like super dope i don't know <laughs> why like it's like certain sounds that he made just sound otherworldly and mm-hmm. still be like soulful at the same time so that's Yo, i think we talked uh, about him uh for a good amount of time. I wonder if that's a, like a Detroit thing. Like he started that and made it like a Detroit thing because I've heard other Detroit rappers um, I mentioned that like Detroit rappers started the whole like uh, slightly rapping off beat or just, I wonder if that's also like a Detroit thing. And then maybe he started that and then it became like a, cause somebody was saying that Eminem used to do that a little bit mm. thing and you know, Detroit rapper. So I wonder if that's a thing. Anybody Bottom. out there from the D let us know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. AJ, who's who who's your second pick? So all right. I'm gonna keep it in the music realm. Um and I'm not gonna say a rapper. I know people were probably thinking that, but um <laughs> even though there's two big ones we could all think of, but uh or well, several actually, but but anyway, um I'm gonna go with I've been I've been going back and forth in my head and like which one of these people I'm gonna go with. Um and I think I'm gonna go with okay, because I know more about this person's life, I'm gonna go with Amy Winehouse. Mm. And um reason being is uh Okay, for starters, um, I like her music. That's I think that's the most obvious reason. But um, <laughs> but 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 sadly, I didn't honestly, I didn't even really get into her music. Sadly, until after she died, which you know is unfortunate. But um, because and I'll be honest, the re- reason being is the f- the first the first song that I've ever heard the first song that I ever heard from her was was Rehab, right. And the first time I heard it, I didn't like the song. For one, it was played constantly, and that right. that never rubs you the right way when you just hear something all the time. And then I never really listened to the words. Only only thing I would remember hearing is rehab. Or, oh, you know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> like, this doesn't sound like sound, this doesn't sound like something I would want to listen to. Yeah. So anyway, fast forward to I think it was 2011. I think when she died, maybe 2010. Mm. But um. I I know I know she died on my anniversary. I do remember that, mm. which is why I always remember J- July twenty fourth. And um, mm. uh, and I'm not saying like I'm not saying because I'm a super fan. I'm just saying it just it was on that day. I I yeah, remember it, so easy, easily <laughs> co- correlatable thing. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. So anyway, the thing I would want to talk to her about is how does your like okay so how, how does your mental health relate to your art and to go further into that from my and th- i kind of got a, some of this information from the uh documentary that came out like a few years ago called amy which is really, really good. good um it's really good yeah, and I, it's like i learned so much about her through that um yeah but anyway I, w- I i would i would just want to know like because from my understanding she always wanted to be a singer, but she never wanted to be a global, you know, star. Mm. And, you know, she just wanted to sing for a living, but she didn't, she wasn't asked for everybody to bow down to her or praise her. And, you know, she seemed, seemed to be like a, just a nice English girl or whatever. <laughs> and um, so it, it went from just wanting to sing because that's what she was passionate about to being thrown into the spotlight, you know, just, you know, she just blew up and, I want to know, like, like where, like where, like when do you cross over into just, just going and saying, like, what's, you know, is that is that in everybody? Can every, you know, like, you know, like, because I'm sure there's people in Hollywood right now that we don't know that are going through the craziest time. Like, we don't know that because mm-hmm. you know some people are really good at hiding it. Some people, you know, like, but we mm-hmm. see celebrities have mental breakdowns all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and for her, it's unfortunate that, you know, when she was going through her last years of her life, you know, the tabloids and the media was not helping her whatsoever. Like they were just dogging her, just every chance they, they got. And it's like her story to me, as, as far as musicians, Hollywood, just entertainers, I'll say that. I think like her story is like, to me, at least, like one of the saddest because she literally could have had help, mm. but her, her own like father, her own, you know, was like, no, like, like the, and what was so ironic is because I'll say how much I didn't like rehab. I didn't realize how accurate that song was. It, and it, like they made, they played that song. Like it was yeah. so happy and it is yeah. such an incredibly sad song. Yeah. yeah. It's when you, like when you like actually know, yeah. yeah, because like, and if we, for, for people who don't know, like her, her dad literally was like, no, you don't need to go to read. Like that's a true, mm-hmm. that lyric is a true thing. And it's like, that's terrifying. And <laughs> then the fact that he, like when she was going through her times and when she was trying to rehab and stuff, um, when she was trying to get better, he was cutting deals, trying to make, get TV shows, but based on the mm-hmm. pain of his daughter. Damn, son. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So for me, like, I will, that's, that's, she's on my list just because, like, I just, I will, like I said, I just want to know, like, where, like, if you're, if you're respected in your field, like, how high should you go before you're like, okay, this, this is enough recognition. I don't need any more. And but like, you know what's crazy about that, about that pick is like, we see that so much in today's music. I mean, mm-hmm. not that that was so long ago, but yeah, like, it's been going on for so long. Like they okay. always, I feel like they know that half of these artists are mentally unstable, mm-hmm. but they also know that's why some of them make good music, passionate music or good music or whatever. Yeah. So they kind of ride off of that. And it's just sad that it was her actual father. But usually right. it's like the, the business industry or, <laughs> You know who up yeah. label heads or Execs. whoever may be in yeah. charge of uh manager or whatever. Yeah, and I'm sure they had some part in it too. Right. You know, just like oh, she needs heroin. Just go go fetch her some. So she yeah, they, so they enable show. her to to do that yeah. so she can keep putting out that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like saw her read. on stage. Okay, go ahead. My bad. No, no you go ahead because I'm gonna finish my point with that. Okay, okay. I was gonna say I saw her on stage. Uh, one time and she was like obviously completely shit faced it man and like i, think I know i think i know what and she was like falling over the state and i remember like that shit even just watching it and this was only a couple of years ago like i, I watched it mm-hmm. and that shit made me feel so bad for her bro man yeah like it's just mm-hmm. like and because I, I i had pre it was one of those late nights where i'm like going down a rabbit hole watching a bunch of um amy winehouse <laughs> and, I, and i had just watched the previous video where she was like just coming on the scene and people were interviewing her like saying oh you're this new girl you know mm-hmm. can you go ahead and sing for us a little bit and her voice was so wonderful and just to see that and then watch that video later on was just crazy man yeah and she was like her and i, I don't know her personally you know honestly so just based off of what i've seen like she was so she seemed to be very authentic like she, she would do like a, a, an interview and she wouldn't censor herself she yeah. wouldn't you know she mm-hmm. had that very aggressive english accent like the, not the proper mm. english accent yeah. but she wouldn't she wasn't trying to hide that she was just like mm-hmm. just just herself yeah. um and that, that was just that was admirable and then you know just see her look like an average woman to shrink down to like you know a skeleton essentially before you know she passed away it was like it's just terrible <laughs> yeah i think that but, part, the part that uh, uh i'm sorry go ahead all right okay go ahead i was gonna say this <laughs> the other artists I was going to pick, and because Marcus, you, you said like there's artists that you know even today that still kind of fit in that same. I was going to actually just say artists that actually died before her, but it's, it's still the same thing. And that guy is a uh, Kurt Cobain, and although we mm-hmm. don't really know how he killed, how he died to this day, I mean they say he killed himself. Who knows? But there is no there is no denial that he was obviously a troubled. You know, he was definitely. You know, troubled like mm-hmm. e- even like the lyrics in the songs. Like, um, I mean, ju- I mean, just the some of the song lyrics is like, I mean, I, 
I'm trying to think of one, but it, it, it is what it is. He just he just seemed troubled. But like Marcus was saying, like executives know like, well, this stuff is terrifying <laughs> lyrics, but hey, so so let's put it out there. We're not, right. not going to check on the mental, mental health as an individual, even though he's clearly trying to say something to us. Mm-hmm. But what's like, crazy is people, do, it seemed like they die every every year, literally. Oh, yes. Or twice a now. Yeah. Like we yeah. hear about the same story, man. And yep. sometimes it's, it's pretty much the same drugs, like mm. yeah. in a different form. Maybe. Yeah. Or a lot of times it's a lot of different drugs. Like like when Mac Miller died, he had like a lot of drugs in the system. Yeah. I'm not right. saying that he was high on all of them at the same time, but he just, you know, and that's not mm-hmm. me like, that's not me like um, victimizing people that, that, that use anything because I'm not, but uh-huh. it's just like, you know, you just, you just, you, you ask yourself like what makes the person continue to do these things, even though they know what the result could be. Like I've always mm-hmm. been fascinated with that. It's like, they must be in a lot of uh, pain to like continuously to do this thing. Like, Oh, this is probably going to kill me, but I'm just going to keep doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. But I feel like what in your, what in your mind breaks down to where you disregard that like warning, I guess you could say. I can't speak from experience, but it always seems as if it's a, a means of escapism. Yeah. Because what, whatever uh, state that this substance puts me in is better than what my sober mind does. Also, I, I think um, they deal with stress on another level, especially like single acts like that, where, you know, you got to perform especially like tour artists mm-hmm. you got to perform almost every day and at a level where you maintain your reputation so i think i think a lot of them i think is it is an escape thing and i think is a a stress thing and uh but ultimately it is i guess it is to numb the reality somewhat mm-hmm. because they are expected to to do to do extraordinary things. Yeah, <laughs> and and I that's why I respect a lot of artists in 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 a lot of fields like Dave Chappelle. Like he was able to tell himself like, now it may have been some other things at play, but um, he had to take a break, you know, mm-hmm. and and now he he lives at his own pace, you know. Yeah. He works. I mean, he works at his own pace, which is out yeah. of is. I mean, lives I'm too. sure it's a lot of stress. Yeah, you have a world tour, and you gotta, you may have to perform every day, and you may not want to, <laughs> but you're a machine at that point, you know. Mm-hmm. But the way he, the way even Chappelle controls the shit. Of course, we don't really know inner workings and all of that. Right. But yeah. from the way people, from way it sounds. And, you know, stories that you hear from other comedians and stuff. It's like, yo, Chappelle's still living a very full life uh, Mm -hmm. while working how he wants to work. Right. Holding down his farm in Ohio, raising his kids and all that. Like, and and during that whole time when he left the show, they were like, he's crazy for leaving $50 million. And then he came, he came back on his own terms and made more. Yeah, granted, (laughs) it does take a certain amount of money or leverage to to decide your own like to, yeah. to beat by that's, you. That's a, that, what's that that's thing a called to <laughs> drum at the oh uh, beat, the pace your beat, beating your own drum. Uh, beat your yeah, own the beating yeah. your own drum. Like <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I could not think of how you, how you <laughs> but um people who do that have some type of leverage or 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 a certain amount of money where they yeah. can afford to be either independent or tell their bosses what they're gonna do. I oh, trust that, me. Yeah, I, yeah, I you you don't case. just go to Africa because you can. I mean, right. well, look, well, you don't go to Africa because you don't ha- you don't have the money to do it. You're like, right. you know and, what? Fuck it. And and, and and most people cannot just throw away all their obligations right. at 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 a at a moment's notice. Right. True. Well, maybe we can, but you know, he took that risk and and it's he came out to it. Yeah, it's condition. Yeah. Yeah. I will say um, before we leave Amy and before we leave this question uh, to move on to another one, uh, 
the the saddest part of that story that I can remember anyway was when her dad her dad told her that she had a show and she really did not want to do it. So she drugged herself out, got completely mm-hmm. wasted and blacked out. And then she woke up on stage. Oh, they, and they, they, put, they, they put her on a plane while she was unconscious and then literally got her dressed for the show and was like, and as soon as she like, got some kind of lucidity they were like all right you go on in like five or whatever man that's on another level man that's yeah yo that somebody need to be arrested that's, near, that's a damn near slavery type of thing yo, somebody need to be arrested that shit or like man damn yeah, like, i don't know how you could do that to your own kid it's like like that's craziness man like, that made joe jackson look like freaking <laughs> bill cosby bill cosby on the show <laughs> he, he, he <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he was actually just selling uh, Jello and pudding and shit. Yeah, it was like, very important. Yeah, make, yeah. The make, pudding make Bill Cosby. Like, <laughs> no, we're just gonna say Heathcliff. We got to se- we got to separate <laughs> separate the two. <laughs> true, true, true. Um, yo, dude, but yo. But, but, do y'all still listen to R. Kelly? <laughs> no, that was very. Uh, I, never, I mean, I never listened to him anyway. <laughs> I, I did. I tell you, yeah, I like I, me I some thought, R. Kelly music, man. I I, I, I like might be going bullshit. You. Uh, Chocolate Factory led to one of the greatest stories of my life, and, <laughs> and yeah, I don't. I, I, not couldn't ready take, for that. I couldn't tell you another another entity that could make a song that starts with "Shut Up," and it's a <laughs> it's a hilariously amazing song. But I'm trapped in the closet, Josh. Trapping yep, the Closet yeah. is a is a work of comedic genius. <laughs> yeah. Yo, eighty eight yeah. songs. <laughs> it's, it's, what and the thing about it is is uh and, and me me and my partner be arguing about this. I think the reason Trapping the Closet is so genius is because he was serious, and that's what <laughs> makes it so fucking funny. For it's some reason, I I have that exact same thought when I hear the beat. When I, uh, especially when I hear the beat with the drop in it, like. <laughs> He was dedicated <laughs> to that beat and that drop. <laughs> it, unfortunately, now I have to listen to it tonight. Bro, <laughs> oh, I, I will Ooh. always love I Believe I Can Fly and shit. I'm never turning back, yo. I'm never turning yo, back. I, it, it wasn't hard to give up R. Kelly. Only, it was just a thing of there were certain songs that were just so funny to me when I would listen to them. It was never a thing. I'm not. I'm not listening to to your sex me because it's a great song. I'm listening yeah. to it because he spent the whole first thirty seconds of the song just uh, talking in yeah, nineteen ninety three. This freaky stuff. That, that, who does that? <laughs> That's that. Like you should know. You should know off rip. Never put the year in the song That's because one it's gonna that the ladies like, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Tell, that to to <laughs> <laughs> Tell that I mean, to Ruben Tell that to Ruben Stutter. I, I, I need because, that joint, man. <laughs> I mean, unless you're taking over instrumentals when you get in the bedroom, just saying it's gonna be received. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's one song that aged well when they put the year in it, and they happen to be taking over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn, buddy, y'all, you already know. <laughs> 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 that's the only one. That's the only oh, one. No, I, man, that, that's a, a lot of songs yeah, that I, I appreciate their their time stamp. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah>. I, th- I <laughs> think another one idea. actually. I then I think uh, and I, I'm I'm gonna say this knowing that y'all probably don't know, but uh, <laughs> that song that Busta Rhymes and Janet Jackson had together, I think he says the year in it. Oh, uh, what's on? What, what's I actually what's remember the video. I actually make, remember make, that. Make, oh, yeah. Body wear. Yeah, I, I remember song. that I video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They that, play a song on one hundred four point three all sometimes. But uh, okay, so moving on. Um, I'm sure that there's no there's we didn't make any kind of clean transition for this, but oh well. Um, <laughs> so if you yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. So on to our se- on to our second uh, uh, participant in this questionnaire, if you will. Um, Katie writes us. I'd love to hear your take on Emerson High School experience versus traditional schooling. So, for those of you who don't know, we are gra- um, or we're all graduates. We're gonna we're gonna make like a a way late in the game intro to us episode that's gonna come to y'all later. But yeah, uh, Emerson School for the Visual and Performing Arts is the institution in which we were all um, trained 
And so uh, we all came in at different times. Uh, I know Aaron, Aaron and Adam went in sixth grade. I came uh, in seventh. Oh, you came in seventh. Yeah. I know Marcus went, Marcus went in seventh because uh, he abandoned me at fucking Candy six, King. <laughs> 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 Let, left me to die with those fucking monsters. <laughs> <laughs> those fucking hooligans. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah you left them with some hatred. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I should have told you the way. I, I don't blame I, you. I, I laid I the path for you, man. <laughs> I did because as soon as he as soon as he left, I was like, "Yo, where's Marcus?" He's like, "Yo, man, I left." And it was like, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> now I'm stuck here with this." <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Shout, shout out to all my Candy King people. It's it's uh I I I I got so much street awareness that I only kind of had prior to then that was like a thing of, I don't even know how many of y'all are really gangsters. I do know some of y'all grew up to be killers, so there's no question about that shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, shout out to y'all. Uh, with. <laughs> <laughs> I can just some kid like... It was, it was, it was, it was just so many fights and stomp <laughs> outs and like... The, you know the kid that kid got uh killed uh from special ed it was it was so much shit that happened in that fucking school but um uh Damn. but yeah Emerson school for <laughs> <laughs> lighter <laughs> subject lighter tone lighter tone <laughs> Emerson school for the visual performing arts uh we all went to for a period of time for at least four years uh I went for five years everybody else went here for longer um that we all trained at <clears throat> Aaron, Adam, and Marcus were all art majors. I was a dance major, obviously. And so uh, the Emerson High School experience versus the traditional schooling, because we were at a artistic conservatory uh, that was still an open public school, but it wasn't treated like a public school because arts were the focus uh, that helped to enhance our academics. But And so academics weren't left out of the equation, but we were all clearly there for um, an artistic focus. So things, uh, things you were able to do that you may not have been able to otherwise, places you were able to visit or experiences you were given that you may not have gotten otherwise. A lot of otherwise is in here, Katie. For example, when yeah, we went to, teacher? No, no. Huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. For example, when we went to New Orleans to dance, etc. Now, what was uh what's really funny? She made that example, and I have no idea what the fuck she's talking about. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Katie, Katie is an old friend of ours, um, and uh, I, uh, me and Katie were both dance majors at the school, and so uh, that's what she was making uh, reference to. No idea what this New Orleans trip was, because I'm pretty sure I've never been to New Orleans, but that may have been like a, a separate trip, cool. or my memory is horrible. Who knows? It's, it's, but it's so, grand, uh, grand scheme of it all, uh, to make that more concise, what's your take on your experience as we came through artistic conservatory versus what you think uh, the regular school system is? I teach in regular schools a lot, so I can, I can, I have a particular perspective. But do you think that there's more opportunities that were allotted to you? Do you think that there was a different kind of social conditioning that you went through, a different kind of uh, uh, maturation process that you went through in that environment? What, how, uh, what's your compare and contrast towards what your experience was and what you know the public school system to be? If I'm, if I'm elaborating on, on that correctly. Yeah. Uh, well, um socially i think that it was a uh like a friendlier family a more family type environment mm -hmm. so yeah. i think that's one of the most beautiful things about uh going to a school like that and um as far as um the schooling part the specialized uh focused on our craft was was amazing um when i talked to other people because i never went to like a public high school or 
or hardly middle school. So um, when I talk to other people, I do hear things that I kind of feel like I missed out on. <clears throat> but it's just a trade off that, that we made. And for instance, like um, things like woodworking, which I don't know if <laughs> if Gary schools even I don't I don't know if they held have yeah, like shop class, right? Or like like, like shop class or, or home ec or stuff like and that. And I and I hear even other people like from other school uh systems talk about like uh machine class, just just stuff like that. Uh I don't that I didn't even know some of them I didn't even know um existed. Mm. But um like I said, that's that's the sacrifice we made to, you know, focus in on our particular craft, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I will I would recommend for anybody to go to to that type of school uh, that we that we benefited from. Yeah, um, if you can, <laughs> if it if it exists where you are and it's, right, and right. it's run well, if you, you have the particular yeah, you set of skills. If you up to par, <laughs> if you up to par, not, not sure yet. But um, besides that, like I said, the social aspect of it was one of the one of the things that made it great. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I think I think when you introduce arts uh to the fabric of of Education, uh, education, especially for for our age, um, it opens the door to a lot of different social and cultural understandings, mm -hmm. which I believe we extremely benef benefited from. Absolutely. So that's my that's my take on it. Uh, I would echo what Marcus said. And uh, piggyback off of that as well. Um, about, in saying that, um, I think we really benefited from, I think, well, personally, I, but I think we, uh, I, I think I might be able to speak for all of us in saying that we got closer to our teachers, particularly in uh, the teachers in our majors, in our major field, because uh, one, they lived in our fucking neighborhood, probably, <laughs> <laughs> um, or, or, or uh, pretty close. Um, and we got growing, growing up there, we got, we would switch back and forth, uh, from these same teachers. So I got more of like an, an, an uh, intimate feel and, um, it felt a little bit more personal, which is what I really like. I, th I think I benefited from that when I was not fucking around <laughs> in class. <laughs> um, and I also think that. In regards to the arts, I think to, to piggyback off of the social aspect that Mark spoke about, I think that we all, one thing that made it more of like a family feel is because we were all in some, to some degree, uh, focused in the same way. We were like-minded in the same way. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but like we we all it, knew. It gave, you, it gave you as a collective a common goal. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's... That, like you said, opened uh, definitely opens the door for something, some deeper. Mm. I think uh, uh, what I what what I think we missed out. I will speak to. I mean, even my brothers and my brother and sister who who lived in a different city, went to a different school, uh, public school. Things like swimming or like bowling and different things that uh, mm -hmm. I I I would have loved to have been on a swim team or something. Mm. Um, that they actually had that as a part of their gym class. I mean, it would have been great to take at least one of the 3,000 days that we play volleyball or basketball in gym class <laughs> to swim. It'd be nice one day. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but like, but but mainly just we were all like-minded and focused in that same way in regards to the arts for sure. And just having a, having a better connection with um, uh, my teachers. Growing up, for sure. Uh, specifically, yeah, that's a good point. Um, mm -hmm. Like the specifically, our major teachers. Mm -hmm. I think it really helped me. Yeah. And I think to to say one thing about the teacher part about it is that the um, I, I feel like 
it it helps them be more invested in us um us too because they build a relationship you know, with you. Right. Is 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 more than you have us for a year or a few semesters and is you know, you probably won't see us again. Mm. So that's a good point. I like I like uh what Aaron said there. Yeah, they yeah. kind of see us grow. Like uh, they can actually see us progress. Mm-hmm. You know, a uh, year after year. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah. I mean, really, that that's the obvious. But I mean, just seeing us grow, literally as humans, like from age mm-hmm. twelve to eighteen, is pretty significant. Right. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. true. Um, at least on my end, anyway. Uh, I got. <clears throat> a few perspectives on that but just like i was all i think we were always in general oddball kind of kids like we we knew we could get around we get around get along with uh the the average joe as far as the hood is concerned but there was always these like underlying common minds of at least, at least as far as we were concerned, we, none of us cared to be normal for whatever normal was in that environment that, you know, some kids were still in very like challenging or in some, in some cases, dangerous environments outside of this space. But Emerson as itself was a safe space. And so we, so we could always, you know, uh, kind of clown people just being like, oh, you can't be hood and play violin. Like, I mean, you can't be, you can't be gangster and play violin, like kill yeah. Killers ain't in the orchestra like that. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So you 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 got to pick one. Now here's the thing: Are there some people at this motherfucker that can? <coughs> sure. But I do remember that we had some licensed boxers that were also piano majors, and I would argue yeah. piano is malleable. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think Agreed. there were things inside of that, uh, but it, it it gave space to kind of challenge all the tropes that came with it. Um, you know, I, I'm, I've, I've been dancing since I was eight years old. And I'm in an environment that majority of, and, and it's, no, it's no denial that a common trope around men dancing, and especially men dancing in the Black community, is people's hangups about homosexuality, right? And yeah. I'm not going to act like the majority of men inside the dance world aren't homosexual, because they are. But because uh, people have their hangups and bigotries toward that, and we we would catch a brunt to that. And the funny thing about it was the majority of the men in the dance department were straight. That's and true. It, it got it got all the way to the point of um to tell a little story. I I know y'all remember the major versus major basketball tournaments, and uh, so we got to we got to that point where. What was it? We got pitted against the vocal department and vocal had a basketball star, if you will, in Gary Sanders. And he said, I, for lack of better terms, I'll be damned if I get beat by some niggas in tights. <laughs> and so. That's funny. Uh, Who said that? What? Who said that? Uh, right? Ah, OK. OK. Um. Uh, so he 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 dishes that challenge out to us, and the thing about it was, it wasn't, it was it it was purely the the disrespect of that statement, and so we ended up playing them in tights, which we had no intention of doing, and we won. It was real, mm-hmm. it was real underdog type story, and yeah. and especially because they they say we won because he came late to the game or whatever, and when he got there, they tried to treat him like Jesus showing up. They still lost. <laughs> I actually remember that game. But, I, I was uh, trying to like, I actually remember that. Man, mm-hmm. they shut us down when we was just getting hot. <laughs> 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 who did y'all? Who did y'all play? You remember? Uh, um, um, what was it? Orchestra? That major. I can't even think of the the. Um, I think orchestra won orchestra, it all. Or, no, I wasn't orchestra. Or, or, orchestra and piano. Orchestra and piano played together, and they won. Like the yeah. whole thing, we ended up losing yeah. to them in the finals. I feel like we played them for some reason. It was uh, <coughs> dang. Was it, uh, was it te- was it tech? Yeah, it was tech. Was it? it was tech. Okay. 
I always forget they were um, major. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so it it was it was stuff like that where it, it was stuff like that where it gave us this this kind of haven where we could study our craft and we can fight to kind of exist against uh, what the typical environment would do. And I only say that in regards of uh, so now all uh, Emerson's closed down and we're in West Side. And it's starting back at square one. We've been out of school for, <clears throat> what, four, 13, 14 years? And those, yeah, uh, and those tropes that, you know, we had to deal with back in high school still are there. And now it's not even just the students. It's a thing of now the teachers and other people, we got to go, we got to, we got to fight for our right to exist even with them. Cause they're, cause, cause they, cause they feed into this system. And so Emerson really created a space. And I, I think most art schools are like this when they're run well, uh, they create a haven for people to be able to find modes of expression in order to focus and learn discipline. And, yeah, and they might be, and they like looking from the outside, they might be perceived as like unique compared to, yeah. Ones you ones you might get elsewhere, and that's what I'm saying. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And we all <clears throat> we all um, auditioned, right? Go there. So obviously, it's it's something that we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, you know, is is that, but that creates an environment where, okay, they we all like we said earlier, like we here for a common thing. And it's to improve in this certain area. Right. And that's, you know, people who go to school otherwise, if they don't have discipline, like you said, like they don't really have no thing to focus on. Mm -hmm. It's just gotta, you know, they're doing it because they, they got to do it. I got a quick question for y'all in regards to this. Um, it just popped up. I think it's a damn good one, too. So, <laughs> um, now this question sucks. No, 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 no. You see that bead of sweat? <laughs> no. um, how do, what prompted you, um, each of you, to audition for Emerson? Or who, who originally told you? And I'll, I'll say why I asked that, because my cousin was actually one of the ones. My, my cousin also went to Emerson um, back when, like, the OG Emerson. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, shout out to him. He was a, an incredible violin pianist and trumpet player um he saw the father's day card that i made him it was like yo you should like i think you actually got something like i think you really should check mm -hmm. out uh, yeah i think you should audition for emerson so how did that happen for you guys where you know was there a particular moment like mine or had you always know you wanted to end up in a school or some environment like that um well for me you know I'll try to lump mine all together because I never actually answered the first question. But yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, the first that I ever heard about Emerson was from my fifth grade teacher, uh, Miss Blackman, and she was actually the one that recommended that I mm. uh, that I audition for it. But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't audition. I didn't after fifth grade, obviously because I didn't go there to seventh. Yeah. But I was like, oh, okay, and it just forgot about it like whatever <laughs> and then um so when sixth grade rolls around i realized that you know some of my friends go went to emerson i'm like oh so people actually go there I, I, you know like, i just didn't know anyone was actually going there which you know hmm. um i think lamont had went there and me and lamont you know obviously back in that time we're super close uh yeah. and he went there and i was like okay you know i, I didn't know he had a talent at, at that point <laughs> not, not as far as artistic talent i should say like yeah, right. I, I didn't know you know like, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but I anyway remember, like I'll, being grateful that lamont was there like i, I remember being oh, grateful sure. that, that like yeah. i knew him and had like a friend in sixth grade because mm -hmm. i didn't know that many people mm -hmm. yeah so like so he went there and i was like okay and then you know time in at the time i was going to tolleson which was like in the the, the, the middle of gary essentially i'm like it, I didn't fit in at Allison, you know, mm -hmm. so, I, I was, I was in like the, the GT program, whatever. And then, so that was his own group and I didn't even fit in that group. 
So uh, like, GT for, for those of you it means gifted and talented, oh, yeah. which is a uh, un- which is a incredibly disrespectful thing to tell the regular kids. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> but Damn. they could have just called it like AP or something. I don't know. Yeah, something they could say AP or advanced, like double A, advanced academics or something. That's all it really was. It just is you yeah, were you were ahead was. of ahead of the curve as far as academics were supposed to be concerned. That's all. Yeah, gifted, that's all. Uh, gifted and talented was, but yeah. So continue. Just wanted to get the context. Yeah. Thanks. So, so yeah. So then there was that, and uh, like I said, like I was at Tolleson, and I had these these two people that I hung around primarily because we were in the same 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 class together, so we hung out together. I mean, we were really like an oddball group group of friends. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember these, but Floyd Springfield. Yep. And, and Terry and Dawson. I don't, I don't know, know if Terry you and Dawson. So he, rest in peace. He actually passed a few years uh, ago. But um, oh he uh, I'm trying to think. He was was he in gift talented? Yeah, because because we were in the same classes. So he he was one of the people that was in GT, but he he didn't go to, to Banneker. So he you know gotcha. whatever whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and we was like this oddball like group of friends. Like, I mean, because because Tarion was like hood like from like hood Gary and was hood. Mm-hmm. And there's me, the art dude from from Miller, and then Floyd was <laughs> Floyd was Floyd. I, I don't even know how to describe. It, but, like, <laughs> yeah. it was, was, was like silly, like really silly. Yeah. And, but we ended up being like a group of friends, or whatever. You know. Mm-hmm. But even within that group, I still felt like this ain't for me. So I, I did. I, I auditioned for Emerson, and I was nervous. Like didn't think I was was good enough, you know, to make it, whatever. Me either, but man. but got accepted, and um. It was the best thing I ever did because I feel like if I would have stayed at Tolleston and went to Westside, I just I don't even think I would be the same person, really. Yo, I feel the same way if I would have stayed at King uh, uh, and went to work. Yeah. Like I, yeah. Granted, like, I ha- I had some people that I was genuinely cool with at King King, but I hated it there. Yeah. Likewise, <laughs> but you <Yeah>. left me. <laughs> 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 but you know he really didn't like it, and that's why he was like, like, "Yo, it was like it, was, it wasn't even the th- it wasn't even the thing." Of, he was like, "Yo, man, I, I'm not gonna be here next year." He was like, "Yo, I'm not there." <laughs> I, I don't know for some reason I I thought you was on the same on the same thing. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I know how you, I, you you got you got there before I did. You talking about you talking about Emerson, right? You got to no, you got to well, uh, Kenny, you Kenny, got, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. got to Candy King. Yeah, Thompson got me out of there, man. <laughs> and I was one marking period later that uh like that first market <laughs> period, I had once I had one C away from the honor roll. <laughs> At the next market period, they were like, Do we need to give you therapy? Because you were dramatically failing. <laughs> but you know they they were changing teachers and stuff like that. Like I'm telling you. And my also, whole, I just didn't do any homework, so yeah. But I, I, I failed my yeah. test. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. fast forward to Citra. I still <laughs> didn't do any homework. <laughs> <laughs> but coming coming out of ed- elementary school, for some reason, I didn't even really know about Emerson, or yeah, or maybe maybe I just wasn't told enough about it because mm-hmm. yeah. I I had always been an artist <laughs> like kindergarten like preschool like you know always mm-hmm. and um actually somebody who really who really put me on was ramon hmm. uh Shout out to he used to always whenever we would talk on the phone or whatever he will always talk about it mm-hmm. and he would you know he he was a good salesman for it <laughs> <laughs> He was like, everybody over here, you know, is is he was telling me like what it's about and all that. And um I guess I I wasn't completely sold until I don't know why it took me to run out of other options. But when I like auditioned, that. um I actually I actually thought that I belonged there, but my uh my portfolio was I procrastinated on it and I I mm-hmm. didn't all the way take it serious for some reason, <laughs> but it still got me in there. <laughs> and I was kind of embarrassed of some of the stuff that I <laughs> that I had in my thing. 
<laughs> so um I think well I mean we say all of this stuff that's great and you know in hindsight um but I'm yeah. I probably didn't take it as I don't want to say serious but I didn't I didn't know what I was getting myself into mm. when I was doing it but now mm. looking back and reminiscing about you know all I learned and what I was exposed to it was it was very uh it was very beneficial but I was just I was just trying to give my origin story <laughs> yeah I feel you on you that guys. it um I I think I took it seriously eventually and even then probably not I took it seriously to a degree you know there were there were people there were people in the dance department who were way more serious than me and at the time I still thought I was gonna like grow to be like a psychologist or an anthropologist or some shit and then I was oh, like dope. oh I yeah do that. wow it was because people used to bring their problems to me and I thought that's all that psychology was is like <laughs> giving relatively well well informed and I say that at, I say well informed like I wasn't a teenager and all teenagers are dumbasses um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, advice and so I was like yeah I'm gonna go study psychology and they were like you know that's a lot of reading right and I was like oh yeah due to you know my loving grandmother anytime I couldn't go to sleep she'd be like yo go read something I can't read for longer than six seconds and not go to sleep. So whoo, <laughs> uh, that, that's going to be a new. And I, um, I, I had been, to tell a brief origin story with that, I had been uh, dancing since eight years old. Like I said, I joined the Banneker dance troupe in elementary hmm. school um, with infamous pieces like 16 tons. <laughs> and, <laughs> it just sounds and funny, yo. Ramon, <laughs> with Ramon, you know, this, this is such an inside joke at this point because, yeah. But the, uh, 16 tons was a piece that got made when I was in like <laughs> second, third grade. And to this day, niggas have never let me live this shit down. <laughs> <laughs> and so but uh I, I did my first musical uh Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coat when I was eight. Um uh, and so when I got on stage for the first time, I was really clear. I uh I didn't go to Emerson because I didn't get it just like y'all. I was I didn't really know what it was. And I was like, oh, I just I'm I'm gonna stay in the gifted and talented program because you know everybody keeps telling me it's about these academics, not knowing that arts strength in academics yo um so I these could, other so the, you you said your first plays and your first uh concerts were they were they all, like the, the joseph and the technical their dream coat was that also at banneker or no nah, so or was what it was was this was like 95 96 something like that um the west side theater guild had just uh, started okay and so like it, it had just become a thing uh mark spencer who was also a graduate of emerson had just started this program and so uh, Tony Washington Simpson, my first dance teacher, had just gotten hired as the resident choreographer. And so she's like, hey, I got this group of little nigglets that I need to use. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so she brought us on. And so in, if you know, if you've heard Joseph, because uh, I grew up on the Donny Osmond version from Canada, you know, you hear all the little, little children, you know, la 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 the whole time. I was one of them la 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 kids. And so uh, that's how I got started. And then uh, I went to Tolleson like Adam. Uh, after two, after a semester, they were like, yeah, you got to get the fuck out of here. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, uh, they sent me to uh, my, my home school or my like resident school in which I discovered that apparently Marcus had gotten kicked out a market period before me because I remember going, I remember seeing Marcus in the uh, gym being like, Marcus, what you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> what you in for, man? <laughs> what you in for? Hey, so, that just... Yeah, that just made me think like it'd be cool if we if we did an episode or like part of an episode on like how we met and like went more in depth on that. Oh, that that's if, coming. If remember, that, that, that's what we talked about earlier with yeah. like uh uh giving the backstory on us because yeah, we've yeah, just yeah. been talking and that has yeah. been a thing. Like audience people are going, "Hey, for us, uh, for those of us who don't fucking know you, you want to <laughs> tell us who you are and like about your life story because that would be probably interesting." So yeah. 
we we got yeah, like a whole always, four on home. I just want to I just want to make sure we yeah, add that in there. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Audience, it's just coming. always known each other, y'all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Since existence, <laughs> we're born um, with the. And so, Josh, yeah, you got a good uh, story, man. I'm oh, telling you, sorry. wrap uh, to wrap it all up. Uh, after a year and a half of uh, making it making it through that prison system of Kennedy King Middle School, <laughs> uh, I I went to audition <laughs> and. Uh, funny enough, I really shouldn't have gotten in. I I tell I say this all the time that I botched my audition. In the middle of uh, one, I could I I barely could dance. I couldn't touch my toes. I didn't know nothing about staging or any any of that shit. Only reason I got in is because I'm a guy. Male privilege kicked in like a motherfucker for that. <laughs> because, oh, really, really, really? You think that? Really? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Here's how I know. One, Larry. Larry Brewer, uh, who was uh, one of the main teachers of the department, he was the only person that said yes. Both of the other teachers said no. <laughs> because in the middle of it, I barely knew the choreography and I busted my shit. <laughs> Larry, Larry, Larry has a, te- uh, uh, a move that we've known for all this time where like, you're on your feet and like, you do like this pelvis push up to stand up. And this is before he got Mar- we got Marley on the on the dance floor. And so I was in like my very worn out jazz shoes. And so as I was pushing up, my feet said no. And <laughs> the back of my head smacked off the ground. And then I, I ended up like jumping back up and like trying to jump back into the <laughs> <laughs> my head wasn't swelling in real time. That's how you tired about you. Yo. <laughs> Hey, this yeah. young man popped right back up. <laughs> yeah, and, right. I showed I showed energy and resilience. Never and gave up. Yeah, man. I couldn't I couldn't dance with shit, and so they were like, you know, why do we need why why would we take him in? And Larry was like, because we don't have men that want to do anything. There were men in the dance department, but they barely gave a fuck, and so that's how I got in, and wow. here we are. Hey man, I remember Never being so yeah, me either. That's a really good story. Damn. I remember being so nervous on my audition. Like the dude was like was like walking around with a camera. And I'm like, and he's like, he damn near put it on my shoulder. I'm like, dog, you, this is fucking crazy, man. And we have to draw like a uh I would imagine it was for because I'm pretty sure they did the same type of audition for all three of us, right? Like you guys had to draw a uh like a still uh, house or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, and then something you have to draw like a, and then you have to draw like a live model standing up. As like part um, of it, I think, I think I for think us, they, oh yeah, I think they did, yeah. I think it was a still life for like twenty minutes, then a person for twenty minutes, and I forgot what the, the other part was. And this dude's going around. They had fucking, to bring in a portfolio too. Yeah, yeah, it was like a, you know, a fruit bowl. Uh, I, I think in like a, I think. It was like a farmhouse or something. Yeah, but then I, I, <clears throat> yeah. no, I was just saying then we are we had to bring in our portfolio. Yeah. And show on that yeah. too. That's but where I think I live stuff too. <laughs> I think that's where I did like my best is because I had uh, like had time. back then I was like I was drawing profusely, man. I was drawing a lot. Like I would lock myself in the room and just be drawing, man. <laughs> What's funny is uh, my first day. They tried to put me in drama for some reason. Yeah, they put me in uh, exploratory art in my first day. Hmm. I, I was like, these dudes are these are art majors. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, then uh, they're like, oh no, you're in the wrong class. And I'm like, yeah, I assumed so. <laughs> I, never, I remember sitting next to Brittany Lowe for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> like she you know, know. like yeah. <laughs> Only exploratory I ever had was vocal. That was, uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, hey, that's interesting. Games. Yeah, I did um exploratory drama, and I remember uh, what's her name? Damn it, Miss Booth was like, "Aaron, you really should Booth. be it." Yeah, she was like, <laughs> she, was like man, she was like really pushing me to be a, a an uh, actor, like a it's drama I saw, major. I saw her. Uh, she like, came to my she came to my last show. Oh, that was oh, nice. support, man. Nice. Mm-hmm. It's it's funny how like uh, other major cherry. Other major teachers were trying to poach people. Cause I, mm-hmm. I, I might have told the story before. I, I tell it to, to Kirsten all the time, though. But I took exploratory dance, whatever. 
<laughs> in a uh, seventh grade. <laughs> you can't and, say it like that, son. You can't say it like that, son. And, and this is a true story. Larry, Larry Brewer, <laughs> he he came to me one day. He's like, "You should come. You should come back during lunchtime and work on some stuff with us." I was like, "All right," and I never showed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. Yo, Larry, uh, Larry did pull. A, he did poach a couple guys. He got uh, between art and mm-hmm. drama. I don't think because uh, Greg, Greg yeah. was a vocal major, and he ended up getting really invested, but he never stopped being a vocal major. Yeah, I think I think was he like a double major, or did he just dance? Like just, <clears throat> he he would just do, he would just do dance after school. He didn't okay. take him with us during the day. Gotcha. Um, and he wouldn't have never been in my class anyway because I was that much older than him. Yeah, but yeah. Yo, we want to thank Chris and Katie for sending in your questions. This was a fun talk. Nice little walk down memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like I said, the uh, our or, our origin uh, origin story podcast is going to come. We formatted it to make it like not documentary style, but documentary. What the fuck did I just say? It's cool. I messed up <laughs> masturbatory, so it's all good. We, yo, we all get one. We all get one. <laughs> Your part got cut, though. So, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, um, we, we, we're just trying to format it so that we can, make, we can make it as engaging as possible. But we want to thank y'all for joining us for another episode of the Informally Honest Podcast. want to uh, encourage you to, uh, if you're listening, Go watch it. If you're watching, go listen to it. If you want to just do that thing where people like put people's plays on repeat to get the listens up, do that shit too. I encourage all cheating in regards to helping us get our numbers up. Tell your <laughs> friends, tell your family, tell your kinfolk. You can follow us on Instagram at Informally Honest. You can follow us on Facebook at Informally Honest Podcast. And you can tune in to this YouTube page if you aren't tuning in already. All right. Y'all got any last words? Uh, yes. So far, we've been, we've been getting nothing but good feedback. So I hope that encourages you guys to check it out even more. I beg to differ because if one more person goes, yo, you wild for that dick shit. Then (laughs) 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 Um, (laughs) if y'all and what's what's funny is I'm like if y'all only knew all the jokes that I make that I do not say on this fucking literally okay really (laughs) actually one of the, the first things that the guy that I talked to about this podcast with at work said was. Something about your dick. For sure. That's the first thing he said to me talking about it. Apparently, this is going to have to be a merch item. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got to get back to Adobe and get some more design to go. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it's about this. Yeah, right here, right? Like this. <laughs> Marco, Adam, y'all got to think y'all want to leave off. <clears throat> Not really, man. Be, be blessed. Word. <laughs> We're four brothers who pride ourselves yeah, on having. Oh got shit! To say. You, 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the bottom of my screen. So that, that, that really works. You were waving no, so that's why I assume. Oh. Like <laughs> nah. nah, I actually don't. I actually don't have anything. Just, you know, just have a have a bus day. Have a bus day. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Miss Elmore, did Miss Elmore used to say that? Huh? I think Miss Elmore used to say that, didn't she? Or was it B plus? Damn, I don't remember, man. All I'm wait, no. Who was wait? What was her name? Our teacher that used to be like, "All right, class, take oh, out your notebooks and data." Not Miss Cerny. Miss Stanley. Miss Stanley. Miss Stanley. Yep. Stanley. Shout out to Miss Stanley. Yep. Best <laughs> math teacher I ever had. Yeah, man. Easily. Yeah, she was cool. That's real. Yeah. Marcus, do you remember our uh, our math teacher at KK? Uh, he was a white dude. Miss Stanley used to talk about him all the time. Um, he was one of the basketball coaches. He um, he kind of looked like Ron Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I think I tried tried to not remember. That. That's real. That's real. <laughs> you 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 had a lot of trauma, and which we both did with that place. We are four brothers, different mothers and pappies, who pride ourselves on having candid conversation, rooted in being forthright, vulnerable. And most of all, honest. Peace.
Peace, y'all. Right. Right.